What's going on with home values as of the end of October? I am Jennifer Hernandez, and I'm bringing this to you today. Senior loan officer, I've closed over, you know, 4,300 loans, super fun. I love what I do, and I love to bring consumers and realtors, the whole community information that can help them thrive and do whatever it is that they need to do. So check out my YouTube channel, Loan with Jen. I've got a Biz Tips channel and then just a library. Uh, so Loan with Jen on YouTube is a library of, I've got over about 300 videos that anything you want to know about a home, I've probably made a video about it and growing. I'm always thinking of new topics. So, and we've also got a Biz Tips channel. So check us out there. Okay, Houston Stats, let's roll into it. So Houston Stats, uh, as of... October 2021. So single family homes uh, down 5.2%. So we are seeing a little bit of a dip. Uh, 8,700 units sold versus 9,100 this time last year. Um, there are all year we've seen less units sold because the inventory is tighter, but the prices are going up. It's an interesting phenomenon. So that's continuing but the home, home sales, the actual number of sales did fall uh, quite a little bit from the month before. Single family average price did increase 13% to 377. Uh, this is actually over the last year that the price has increased on average 13%. We've seen some communities much more than that, but on average that's historically Houston is three to 4% maximum. So this is a huge number for Houston. 13% overall for the city is a huge number. The average price is 377, while the median price is 305. So I did a little bit of research because I've always just kind of wondered like, gosh, what's the difference between average and median? So if you take, the average is actually where you take the number of sales divided into the, the volume, literally the, the prices of the homes. So, you know, the prices of the homes, let's say I'm making this up, but let's say they were $1,000 and let's say there were 10 sales. Okay. So that would be a hundred dollars per, 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 uh, per sale, right? That's just a very small unrelated example, but literally it's done by the mathematical equation, but the median actually takes that middle number from one end to the other, and it just takes the middle. So they are two different things. Um, still, it's higher than Houstonians are used to. I mean, I remember just a few years ago, it was in the mid 200s, not that long ago. So as a side note, because of these types of stats, did you know that the conforming Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan amount average uh, for the maximum loan amount is changing at November 30th is when it gets released. So it's based on higher home values as a whole around the country. We're anticipating 625, 625,000. It might be as high as 650. We don't know. We're all just kind of waiting with bated breath. Now, currently the conforming loan limit in the Houston area is $548,250. So that will increase. What that means is that, gosh, almost a $75,000 increase is the largest percent increase that I've seen in my 26-year career. So what a higher conforming limit does is it allows, as the prices of homes are increasing, it allows people to have a higher loan amount with a lower down payment. Conforming loans, you can put as little as 3% down as a first-time buyer and 5% down as a second-time buyer. So you can, you know, you can have a home in the mid-600s and put very, very little down. So that's, that's a benefit uh, to the community as a whole. So people don't have to have as much of a down payment because, you know, jumbos normally customarily require 20% down. So that's just a side note. I don't have a slide on that. Um, so here's some more stats for you. So total property sales, uh, you can see from October to of last year to 
now, October of 21. So property sales are down 3%, but the dollar volume is up almost 10%. Uh, total active listings down. So there's less number of listings, but the volume and the, the sales prices are increasing. That is a sign of a very tight market, which I think we know is going on all over the country. So as you can see, again, the median prices are up 13, 14%. Uh, the month in, the month's inventory has gone down to 1.8 months inventory. Now, a balanced market is six months. Houston hasn't been at six months in a while. Uh, you know, we've kind of hovered anywhere between four and six months on average. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good, tight, uh, nice, Houston's a nice real estate market for a long time. Uh, but 1.8 months, I just, I don't think I've seen this in 26 years. So still very tight. That number is still, you know, very accurate as of October. I don't know what November will bring. Uh, things have slightly slowed down, but not very much. So even if we go from 1.8 months to three months inventory, that's still considered a seller's market. So you don't get to a buyer's market until you have six months of inventory. So just so you know, we've got a long way to go. Uh, here's some trending stats over and over. Now, the, the colors here at the bottom, the percent change, uh, you can see these are some of the most popular neighborhoods in Houston. So down on the very bottom, percent change, uh, Louisa on my team made this graph from scratch. I'm so proud of her. From um, har.com, we got the information. Uh, har is Houston Association of Realtors. So the woodlands down here at the very bottom, you can see the woodlands is up. 25% over the last year. Uh, Katy is a very popular area in Houston. Katy Southwest is up 14%. If you pop over to the right uh, here, oops, whoa, -oh. Katy Southeast is up 20%. Uh, going back over to the, to the left, Spring Branch is up 10%. Heights is up 8%. Lake Conroe is up 11%. So these are percentages of some of the most popular areas in Houston, we have not seen percentages like this ever. Like I mentioned, Houston, typically Houston is anywhere from three to 4% historically. The reason that Houston is so much in check is because new construction is always been a huge force in our market. Houston, if you've never been here, I mean, there's still some cow pastures out on the edges of town, okay? It just, Houston just keeps growing outward. So there's lots of land, there's lots of undeveloped uh, places to build. And so Houston just keeps going, you know, the center of Houston just keeps moving outward. And so now with the builders, there is very tight inventory. There is actually no inventory with new builds right now. There are people that uh, in the summer, they were, I heard of some people camping out with one builder that a lot was coming up and they were like, you know, I don't know how many people, more than a dozen that wanted that lot. So inventory and, and pricing with new construction is very, very different than it used to be. Lots are not readily available because then you buy the lot, you have to develop them, right? So everything is really lagged behind, which causes people, if they want to move, they go to resale, which inflates the price because people need somewhere to go. So that's what we've seen the phenomenon over the last couple of years, uh, definitely. So it's been very interesting. So again, these are some of the most uh, highly reported areas, and you can see the average prices from the graph on the left to now the graph on the right. In all of these areas, the average price in these areas you can see. You know, the woodlands, I'm going uh, starting from the top here at the woodlands at 625. Uh, Katy is 444, and these Katy is out in the birds. Uh, Spring Branch, average price is 439. The Heights average price is 647. So you can see in some of these areas that have these larger prices, now these conforming limits will be able to cover and get new home buyers into these homes. So it'll be super exciting. So I thought it would be interesting to cover where are Texans, new Texans coming from? Now, 
most of the people in the last 20 years, I thought this is an interesting stat that in the 19 of the last 20 years, the top state that reloads to Texas is California. And that has not changed. We have seen a lot of people from California. Uh, I've got a lot of people that come from Washington, but if you can tell most of the people that come from this, this cool graphic um, is from the West Coast, okay? Um, but mostly California, a lot of people from California. When new Texans come, where are they going? Did you know that Houston Harris County, where I live, and I'm actually residing right now, my office right now is in Harris County, is the number one spot, Houston Harris County. And you can see a lot of these other counties are in, um, you know, different parts. Tarrant County is at uh, Dallas area. Uh, you know, Dallas is another popular spot uh, here, but mostly people come to Houston. A lot of people come to Houston, but our, all of our cities are great. Dallas, San Antonio, uh, Austin. A lot of people are coming to Austin because of a lot of the headquarters of some companies are going to Austin. So I'll be interested to see this next year as some of these companies are actively right now relocating. Um, so an interesting press release from har.com in their October press release. You can get this right off their website. In fact, that's what I did. So we did experience our second decline in sales in October. The first one was in July. So there was a little dip in July. Then we saw things go back up a little bit or stabilize. Um, so this is just the, the, the second time in 2021 that we've had a little bit of a backwards movement. Things are still very active. I will tell you, uh, we loan in every portion of the city and surrounding areas. Uh, we have lots of clients that are just all over. So we see all kinds of activity around the city. Uh, the, the inventory still, as I mentioned on the prior slide, still remains tight at 1.8 months of inventory. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Now, normally uh, towards the end of the year, historically, and that is happening now, there are less people putting their house on the market because of the holidays, but we do see some, some active listings. Um, uh, I, I do anticipate going into the next year, there are quite a few people that we have heard and been following up with that have applied with us. And they're like, eh, we're sick of multiple offers. We are just sitting around. We're just sitting back until things might start to calm down a little bit. So I have a feeling that once these numbers start to slide a little bit, there's going to be some, some people that enter the market and it's, we're going to be right back where we were all over again. So there's not going to, I don't anticipate from what I'm reading that there's going to be this just ginormous decline in the market. Uh, it'll happen maybe slowly, uh, but I think that a tight inventory market is here to stay for, for a couple of years. I really do, because we don't have that plethora of new construction that normally has kept us in check. More people are seeking resale, homes that are already built, because they need to move. They need to better their situation. Their family's growing, or they're downsizing, or they're coming from out of state. Houston is a very active city. So I truly believe that the time to buy is now. Rates are still relatively low. They're in the low threes. It's still a great time to buy a house. Uh, there's down payment assistance programs available for people that qualify. All kinds of activity going on that are good things to take advantage of. So be sure you ask us about that. Just visit me, by the way, loanwithjen.com. All of my handles on social media, my, loan, my website, everything is Loan with Jen. Uh, you can feel free to contact me there. So just a quick graph for you, signs of stability. So uh, this is just a graph that, uh, yes, in May and July, uh, actually, uh, hang on, I'm reading sideways. Uh, in July of this year, so this dates back just a little bit. This was done by the Texas A&M Research um, Real Estate Center. Whoop, I'm an Aggie, class of 94. Uh, in, in the middle of the year, we started to dip just a little bit 
Um, but not too much. Uh, the, the housing has did accelerate after the pandemic, has stabilized a little bit. But I think that, you know, these these values have gone up like gangbusters. And I feel that things are going to stabilize and possibly slightly continue to go higher is my anticipation. So from a lender's perspective, this is just what I see, feel, see every day as we have lots of applications from different parts of the city. Quarter four, we're in the fourth quarter. We are starting to see more and more sellers paying for title policies. Uh, during the summer, it was rampant that to get under contract, the buyer had to pay everything. Now, we still do see that, but we're seeing more and more sellers. In fact, just yesterday, I saw a seller give money towards closing costs in addition to the seller title policy. I was floored. I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen this in like almost the whole year. So that was great. Um, so this is just something interesting for you. We still are having appraisals come in below value. It just, you know, it's always been there. So if you use the numbers or if you look at the numbers just historically, on average, about 10% of the appraisals come in lower than the contract price. It's just a supply and demand issue that the house is worth whatever someone is willing to pay for it. And sometimes Sellers get it under contract for over the list price for whatever reason. Now, we've seen more of that definitely this year. In fact, if you look at my quick uh, number here, that uh, in Q3, 43%, I got this from my appraiser friend, 43% of the homes sold over list price. That's a lot. Now, 23% of the homes came in appraised value below the value. Now, those numbers are definitely elevated. Historically, 10% of the appraisals, it's a numbers game, just come in lower because sellers are always trying to get as much as they can, regard, no matter what the market's like, right? Um, so this is just some, some stats for you. Um, I haven't had too many lately come in under value. This was quarter three, we're in quarter four, don't know yet where we're going to land. Uh, we still are seeing multiple offers, not as frequent, but we are seeing multiple offers uh, still to where there's at least two or three in some of the most popular areas. But I haven't heard in a while, uh, gosh, in the summer of spring and the summer of this year, you know, in some of the very popular below $300,000 price areas. I mean, gosh, there was one that had like 90 offers on a listing. Um, in the very, very low priced areas. Haven't heard that in a while, uh, but there still are multiple offers. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, we are hearing from our buyers, some of them that like, you know, we're just going to sit out a little bit. We're just super tired, but we still have plenty of them that are just moving around. They, they want to buy before the end of the year, take advantage of rates while the rates are still low. Rates are starting to trickle up. I will, I will tell you that it's, it's happening slowly but it is happening and it will continue to happen. So you can still get something with a three in it for sure. So still rates are in the low, low, low threes. So still a great, a great time. So thank you so much for attending today. Thank you for uh, just watching. Here's my contact information and loanwithgen.com. Feel free to reach out to us anytime. And I'm happy to help friends too. So we'd love to help your friends get pre-qualified and buy a home. Thanks again for joining. We'll talk to you soon. Legacy Mutual Mortgage is an equal housing opportunity lender. The opinions expressed here do not reflect those of Legacy Mutual Mortgage.